Hey everyone, in this video we're going to discuss what zero gamma is and how can we create high probability trading strategies around the zero gamma level. But before we start talking about zero gamma, we first need to define what gamma is. Gamma is one of the option Greeks. It's a second order derivative, and it measures how the delta, which is another option Greek, changes as the underlying security price moves up and down. So delta would be a first order derivative. Gamma is a second order derivative. Delta measures how the option price changes for every $1 move up or down in the underlying security. And gamma is measuring how the delta changes as price moves. Option prices don't move in a straight line. There is a convex nature to option pricing. And so as price moves towards at the money of the contract that you're holding, the gamma is going to increase at that point, no matter whether you're coming from out of the money or you're coming from in the money gamma is going to be the highest when you are at the money for the particular contract that you're holding so what gamma is really measuring is the acceleration or deceleration in the option price movement and so it's really important to understand where your gamma exposure is when you're managing an options portfolio. That's going to tell you at what point the changes in your option prices can hurt you the worst. And so gamma is a really important metric, especially if you think about market makers, option dealers who are trading on both sides of the market with an intention to provide liquidity and depth to market so we can have fluid trading throughout the trading day. Market makers will hedge their portfolio of positions by analyzing where their gamma exposure is the highest. We can also take a look at structural positioning for the options market as a whole for any given security. So we can look at the SPY, we can look at Tesla or Amazon or any individual name as well. Any, any security where an options market is traded, we can analyze the gamma exposure and the structural positioning for that market. This is also super important because it tells us where liquidity is highest or where liquidity is skewed to one side or the other, either positive or negative. And so inherently, this is giving us kind of a supply and demand picture of the market that we're that we're looking at. So that's a quick overview on what gamma is. We actually have an entire video on how gamma exposure works. So check that out if you get a chance. Now let's discuss what zero gamma is and the characteristics surrounding zero gamma. Zero gamma is the neutral point in the market where the overall gamma structure is flat. At the point of zero gamma, there is no structural skew in the options market. It's basically where the put gamma exposure and the call gamma exposure net out to zero. This is typically somewhere between the largest call gamma and the largest put gamma concentrations. And there's usually a very clear delineation between the positive gamma side and the negative gamma side, and it's right in the middle where the zero gamma level sits. Another characteristic of zero gamma is that it's the point at which dealers are typically the least hedged overall, and that's why it's kind of considered the neutral point in the market. It's where the mar there's really no huge positive or negative skew in the market. Price is sitting kind of at the very middle of the market structure. Another characteristic of zero gamma is that in a falling market, Market, where price is going from higher to lower, zero gamma is the point where gamma is going to flip from positive to negative and vice versa in a rising market. When, when price is increasing and it trades through the zero gamma, the gamma bias is flipping from negative to positive in that scenario. Another characteristic of the zero gamma level is that we oftentimes will see a stock or index trading at its zero gamma on the day following a big weekly or monthly options expiration. And this makes sense if you just think about it in inherently after a big options expiration a lot of the contracts have rolled off and so it kind of wipes the slate clean at least partially as all of those positions are now no longer active and so market participants then have a chance to reset their positioning by buying or selling contracts throughout the option chain as i mentioned before a lot of people think of zero gamma as the neutral point in the option market structure, and that is the case. But neutrality does not always mean low volatility. There's actually been several studies done that show that at the zero gamma level, volatility has the potential to increase the most from this point. And this makes sense because this is the point where option dealers are the least hedged. So there's the most possibility, the most potential for market movement from the zero gamma level. Zero gamma doesn't mean that volatility is going to increase. It just means that there's less hedging in the market. And so naturally that gives rise to potential increases in volatility as the exposure is greater potentially to the upside or the downside from the zero gamma level. 
Here's a really nice chart showing this from Option Metrics. And this is really just showing the volatility level at various gamma exposures. And you can see it is highest technically at the zero gamma level. So how can you use the zero gamma level to increase your trading success? There's two primary ways that I use zero gamma in my trading. Number one is as support and resistance levels. So let me give you an example of what I mean. Here we're looking at the SPY and you can see that the SPY has been trading kind of around just above this 445 level for quite a while and then pops right up into the 450 level, which is our identified zero gamma level. And you can see these levels act more like zones rather than hard and fast lines in the sand. Here we see price was trading around zero gamma for about a day and then opened the very next day quite lower, basically rejecting from that zero gamma level. And if we go back in time, this 450 to 448 zone had been the zero gamma level going back several weeks. And you can actually see this quite definitively here on the chart. At the end of August and beginning of September, price was trading above this 450 level, kind of just bouncing along it. And then as it breaks through it, now gamma has flipped negative and price is trading underneath it until it comes all the way back here a week later, right back into that level, which was another opportunity to short. So in this case, zero gamma is acting as a resistance point because we're in a negative gamma environment over the last couple of weeks. And as price moves up into the zero gamma level, there's a natural resistance at that level where new shorts are going to enter the market. And a lot of sellers use the opportunity to get out of losing positions. Here's an example of the zero gamma level acting as a support in a positive gamma environment. This is Meta. Meta was trading upwards into the 310 area, into the larger gamma concentrations at those level, rejected off of those level all the way down below 300 near the zero gamma level, which then acts as a sort of t at least temporary support creating a bounce scenario in the stock. The second way I use the zero gamma level to trade is by using it as an inflection point, which indicates that the market overall is shifting its positioning and its bias from either short to long or long to short. So here's a live example looking at the queues. This is the total gamma exposure data graph for the queues. You can see the, the price is currently around 370 on the queues. The zero gamma is at the 377 level. And you can see there's, there's a little bit of mixed positioning right around that zero gamma level. You got some positive positioning at 376, some negative positioning at 377. So we know this zone is going to be a little contentious if price trades up into that level. Currently, we're around 2% or so below that level. So we are in a negative total gamma environment. But if price were to trade up into this zone, there might be some choppiness. And then we would know if price continue trading up through that level into the 380 zone, for example, that would signify a big shift in structural positioning. We would see a lot of more positivity, call buying, long positioning entering the market at that point. And so we would know gamma is flipped from negative to positive, And there's going to be more of a positive bias going forward in the next few days and few weeks to come, especially the longer that that positive total gamma remains in place. And so that zero gamma flip would indicate to us that traders and option dealers have now shifted from a negative bias to a positive bias. And that could be a signal for potential risk on trades. And so those are the two primary ways that I use zero gamma. Clearly, zero gamma is not going to tell you exactly what the market's going to do. It's not going to tell you if the market's going to bounce lower or bounce higher, but it's an important inflection point that gives you a lot of information about the structural positioning in the market. The point at which price is at the zero gamma level indicates that the market is neutrally positioned. Option dealers are the least hedged possible. And so, you know, if you're trading from a negative gamma environment up into that zero gamma level, you know that that is a potential potential pausing point where price could either pause or shift back lower. And if it doesn't and price trades through that level, you know that the entire market has shifted to a positive bias and it may be time to jump on board into your risk on trades. Same thing from the positive gamma scenario flipping to negative. This would in the same way would indicate that traders and market participants have flipped their structural positioning negative and it may be time to take your risk off the table in that scenario or outright short the market. So you can see here we analyze the total gamma, the zero gamma levels. We look at the gamma concentrations across the strike prices here on our gamma exposure dashboard. We also view 
the trading activity around the zero gamma as well as the big gamma concentration levels. We also have a 3D surface model where we can analyze the gamma exposures more in depth across time so we can actually see when the big gamma concentrations are expiring further out down into the options chain. And so we use this data in our Discord to discuss potential trade ideas. So if you guys are interested, I'll put a link down in the description below where you can access this dashboard. Uh, we've got several different pricing tiers. So if you're interested, you should definitely check that out. I'll be putting out a number of other videos here in the future going into the nitty gritty of how gamma exposure works, how to analyze total gamma. We're gonna look at positive gamma environments, negative gamma environments and how that can affect volatility as well as the market positioning overall. So be on the lookout for those videos. Thanks so much everybody for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.